I'm Mike McMullen, President of the Chamber. I want to welcome you here. I uh, want to let you know that the Chamber not only exists for our business community, but we also exist for our community. And to be a catalyst to make an event like this happen, we're very honored. Um, I look out in the room and I see a lot of folks who uh, put their lives on the line, who are there when we make a phone call, and they're going to answer, and it's only fitting that we say thanks to you. So I just wanted to say thanks. Our MC of the day is Mr. Seth Shipley. Uh, he will be coming up here soon. Um, he's the owner of Shipley's Diamonds and Fine Jewelry in Hampstead. He's a great guy. And uh, how about Lisa Daggett? She's been doing a great job as our, as our other MC. So now I'd like to bring up for some short welcoming remarks uh, Commissioner Steve Wance from District 1. Steve, come on up. That was short as in the amount of time with the speech, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, just wanted to make that clear. Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to Carroll for those of you that uh, don't uh, live here. Uh, a special welcome today to Pete Landon. Uh, Pete is, um, you'll hear about what Pete does for us across the state uh, in a moment, uh, but we're honored to have him with us today. And on behalf of my colleagues, uh, Dennis Frazier, Doug Howard, uh, Dick Weaver, who couldn't be here, and Richard Rothschild, we want to thank all of you that are involved in public safety. It's a fitting week, and I congratulate the chamber for the week in which they do this. It was National Peace Officers Day on Tuesday. Uh, we were at uh, the Fallen Heroes Ceremony at the Laney Valley a couple weeks ago. Um, tomorrow we will be at the Training Academy in um, Sykesville for their memorial service. So all across the land we are honoring those who are involved in public safety. One of the most important things as an elected official that we do, if not the most important thing, is to make sure that our citizens are safe. And that's a challenge. And to all of you that take that challenge, we thank you. And this is not just lip service from a politician. I've lived it. So on behalf of all of my colleagues and all of us across this great county, congratulations to all the award winners. Thank you to everyone that wears the badge. Thank you to everyone who takes the 911 calls, every level of public safety. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We cannot thank you enough, and certainly stay safe. Thank you very much. Okay, at this time, I'm gonna call uh, Lisa Deggetts back up so that she can um, take you through the process. So that being said, Miss Lisa Deggetts. First, I want to personally thank the committee that helped to put this together. I am very appreciative of your leadership, wisdom, and support. So many thanks to all of you on the committee. If you could please stand so that we can recognize you, I would appreciate that. Thank you. In a minute, we will begin the awards portion of this event. All nominees should stand when your name is called and remain standing until the award recipient is, is called. The award recipient will then proceed to the stage as our Master of Ceremonies, Mr. Seth Shipley, reads excerpts of the nomination of the winner. At, as this is being done, the award recipient or recipients will remain on the stage as their picture is taken by our photographer, Miss Kelly Heck, back there in the green. Um, I now have the honor of introducing our MC for the day, or for the morning, Mr. Seth Shipley. Seth was born in Baltimore and has spent most of his life in Carroll County. He is a veteran of the United States Air Force and has a great respect for public, uh, public servants in the county. And his brother is in law enforcement and has been for 42 years. Seth is the owner of Shipley's Diamonds and Fine Jewelry in Hampstead, and he's been in the jewelry business for 32 years. He currently lives in Westminster with his wife, Carol, and their children. Please welcome the MC of our awards, Mr. Seth Shipley. Thank you, Lisa. 
Good morning. Welcome to the Carroll County Chamber of Commerce second annual Carroll County Public Safety Awards. As you have heard many times and you will continue to hear the words thank you, we hold this event to say thank you. To honor the police, the firefighters, the first responders, the state's attorney's office, and the volunteers who keep us safe and put their lives, their lives in harm's way daily just to protect the citizens of Carroll County. Your service is appreciated. You all perform your critical roles so seamlessly that we often take you for granted. This shouldn't be, so today we bring our community together to recognize you, to highlight your accomplishments and to present awards in multiple different categories. It's difficult to select one person or one incident for a public safety award, as the overall safety of the citizens of Carroll County relies on a team of individuals who serve. There are no lone rangers on these teams of highly trained individuals. They are all dedicated to serve, and they do so with a selfless passion. This event was created to have a positive impact. At this time in our nation's history where police and fire personnel are especially at risk, and there were, where there has been so much negative publicity, we want to carve this day in the history of Carroll County to applaud you and to say thank you. I'd also like to thank all of those who served on the Chamber Public Safety Awards Committee who have made this event possible. They are listed in the program. Please, at this time, give them a round of applause as a thank you. It's exciting to for me to uh, introduce the speaker for this event. Walter F. Pete Landon is the Deputy Chief of Staff, Office of the Governor, as well as the Director of the Governor's Office of Homeland Security. Pete was born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in 1961. I think we need to ask him if he's a Ravens fan or a Steelers fan. He attended Beaconsville High School in Beaconsville, Quebec in 1978, Chesapeake College AA in Law Enforcement in 1980, Towson University, where he received a BS in criminal justice and liberal arts in 1984. He is the recipient of numerous awards. He became a Maryland State Trooper in 1985, Commander of Special Operations Division in 05 to 07. He was a member of the Task Force on School Safety, 06 and 07. Commander of Special Operations and Transportation Safety Command, 07 to 2010. Chief Field Operations Bureau, 2010 to 2012. Department of State Police, Lieutenant Colonel, Maryland State Police, 2010 to 2015. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Deputy Chief of Staff and Director of the Governor's Office of Homeland Security, Director Pete Landon. Thank you very much, Seth. Uh, there's one thing I'm glad for. He didn't fact check anything with his brother Greg or any of the uh, police or fire people that I've worked with in the audience. On behalf of Governor Larry Hogan and Lieutenant Governor Boy Rutherford, I'd like to uh, thank you for allowing us to be a part of this event as well as allowing me to be a part of it. And I kind of felt bad when Steve was talking about being local. Uh, just to let you know what I came through today, it, it only involved one tractor trailer that had 78,000 pounds of smashed bananas all over Route 50, uh, stopped traffic on the Bay Bridge, and I don't know about Route 97, but there was like a creek on that road coming up here. Anyway, I haven't seen anyone run out to uh, start building any arcs, so I hope there's an end to our rain pretty soon. Um, again, on behalf of Governor Hogan, who, who wishes he could be here, he was actually in Carroll County earlier this week. And I didn't know much about math, and especially because I was a trooper, I didn't know very much about math. But I've never been able to figure out how to make 23 counties in seven days every week. Somehow he tries to do it, and when he can't do it, people like me have to show up in his stead. Again, it's an honor. Um, you're supposed to start with a joke, and I don't think it's fitting because we're here to honor everybody. So then you're supposed to tell a story out of your uh, past. Well, Seth did a pretty good job of making that stuff up. And for the record, I lived in Philadelphia. Pittsburgh was a stopover. I was premature. Uh, I'm a Ravens fan. Um, 
There are so many people in this room that I've worked with and I've worked for and I've worked beside and I look forward to working with in the future. So I can't tell a story out of the past because they might throw a napkin up and call BS on me. Um, the reason why we are here is part of exactly what my job is. Whether you, whether you know it or not, the Governor's Office of Homeland Security doesn't have any black helicopters. I do drive a black Tahoe, but we don't do investigations. I'm a coordinating office. It's my job to make sure everybody talks to everybody all the time. Call me a fixer, call me what you want. Uh, but I deal with public safety on a daily basis. And the best part for me uh, is I'm working with people that I've worked with my entire career. I spent 30 years in the state police and two years on a municipal department before that. And it's still some of the very people that I work with then that I work with. Granted, we all are wearing different uniforms. And uh, I didn't realize how much a suit cost till I retired. Uh, so I had to buy a couple of them. But coordination is the main thing. The fact that you actually have police officers, firefighters, elected officials, prosecutors, judges all in one room, all honoring the same people for doing the same thing is amazing. When I first got out of the Maryland State Police Academy, they, they spent six months of telling us we were the best, we were the only, and we became pretty arrogant doing it. Uh, I laughed because one of the first times I was cut loose, I got sent to an accident. And it was a motorcycle accident, and I, and I thought, okay. And I didn't realize the first mistake I made as I rolled up to the scene was to drive over the fire engine uh, hoses. Nobody told me that was a no-no. And then the fire chief reminded me that he was in charge of the scene. And I said, but I'm the trooper. He says, I don't care who you are. It's my scene. I went, okay, that's fine. So I saw the... Uh, guy, it was a Harley on laying beside the motorcycle, and I got there before the ambulance did. And I decided, hey, I'm fresh out of the academy. I know exactly what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to walk up, and I'm going to take care of this patient. The fire, the fire chief said, whoa, 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 trooper. And I said, I have this. I'm trained. I am a first responder. So I walked up to the guy, and I went, oh, my gosh, he's in worse shape than I thought. His head was completely turned around backwards. So the back of his leather jacket, he was wearing colors. The back of his jacket was this way. The zipper was in the front. And I thought, okay, i got to clear his earway. So I grabbed hold of his head. And again, the fire chief was like, trooper, no, don't do that. And I said, stand back. I've been trained to take care of this situation. And I grabbed hold of his neck, and I twisted as hard as I could. And I realized there was nothing more I could do for the guy. You know why that was? Well... His buddy, who didn't crash, said, I can't believe you just did that. He actually turns his jacket around so he doesn't get bugs all over his T-shirt. <laughs> and I had very effectively taken care of his situation. That is a joke, actually. It didn't really happen. <laughs> but it taught me, it teaches everyone, as you sit there and listen, you go, you know, I thought troopers weren't the brightest or sharpest tool in the shed, but this guy, to have the job he's ha he has... Um, I'm lucky to have the job I have. I'm lucky to have the governor that I work for. I'm even luckier to have my compatriots that are like a, in the office, whether it's the, I can call them the Chief Spalding because there's more than one of them in the room, or Sheriff DeWeese, we've all worked together. Uh, the elected officials, we work with the governor's office all the time. My job is to make sure that I can help you in any way possible. Um, and if you ever need any information on probably Sheriff DeWeese the most. Uh, we work together very closely in special operations, and he does the same thing that I do on every given day. How can I help? How can I make it better? And I'm, I'm, looking, around the, uh, I'm looking around the audience, and I'm thinking, the Sheriff's Department has to be getting the bulk of these awards because they've got about four barracks worth of troopers sitting here. It's an old resident trooper joke. Uh, but anyway, I want you to know Governor Hogan s extends his uh, heartfelt thanks for everything that you do. He would be here. He was up at the Laney Valley with, with many of you a couple weeks ago. Uh, he will be here again, and he looks forward to helping out any way he can. I just hope that 
he is not out here because of the torrential rains. I know Lieutenant Governor Rutherford was out uh, in Hagerstown and Frederick yesterday. Hopefully none of us will be called to too much action. Again, I appreciate the service that you give to your county and also the state of Maryland, and I thank you for giving me this opportunity to say hello this morning. Thank you very much. They put this water out here and they said, um, this will help everybody know when we're nearing the end because when I finish the water, we'll be close to the end. That's what they said. Um, this wasn't mentioned, but I, I wanna bring this up. It's, it's, a, really, it, it's, it's a really neat accomplishment um, that has happened um, in the past uh, week or so in Carroll County. And that is the graduation of the Sheriff's Department First Academy class. So. Can we have a round of applause for Carroll County's uh, first graduating class for um, sheriffs? I think it's awesome. As we start our awards, Mike McMillan, Lisa Daggett, please join me on stage. Um, Senator Justin Reedy, on behalf of the Carroll County delegation, please come forward. As I call your name, please stand and be recognized. I will then announce the award recipient's name, read a short description of their accomplishments or the incident involved, and then bring them to the stage to receive their award. Good. Supervisor of the Year. Those nominated for Supervisor of the Year or Sergeant Robert Swartz, Hampstead Police Department, Lieutenant Thomas Kowalczyk, Westminster Police Department. The award for Supervisor of the Year goes to Lieutenant Thomas Kowalczyk. <laughs> Lieutenant Kowalczyk began his career with the Westminster Police Department in October of 1996. He was promoted to the rank of Lieutenant on December 31st, 2013, he was assigned to the Field Services Bureau as the watch commander. He has proven to be a consummate professional, dedicated supervisor to the officers he supervises. Lieutenant Kowalczyk takes his role as watch commander seriously. He led his group in an exemplary manner during 2017, which resulted in a nomination in the ultimate receipt of the unit citation for his work group. Lieutenant Kowalczyk is dedicated to the officers that work for him and with him. He views the members of his work group as individuals with different strengths and weaknesses. Lieutenant Kowalczyk makes it a point to get to know the individuals under his command. He best uses their strengths. Lieutenant Kowalczyk is deeply involved with the programs at Westminster Police Department and deems it essential, such as the crisis intervention team and the mental health first aid. Lieutenant Kowalczyk regularly calls attention to the great work that the men and women of the Westminster Police Department do. He makes sure to provide written documentation of a job well done for the members of the work group, and it doesn't stop there. If he recognizes a good job, regardless of whether you work for him or not, he will send the correspondence to the appropriate supervisor on behalf of that employee. Lieutenant Kowalczyk constantly demonstrates skill, professionalism, and dedication to his work group the department, the city of Westminster, and Carroll County. It's no surprise that he is recognized by many as an accomplished supervisor. It is therefore a great pleasure to recognize Lieutenant Thomas Kowalczyk for Supervisor of the Year. Thank you. And hopefully by the end of this, I'll, I'll perfect your name. Instructor of the Year. The following award recipient was nominated for Officer of the Year, and the Selection Committee felt it important to recognize her for her immense value as she brings as an instructor. The award for the Instructor Officer of the Year 
goes to Lieutenant Nicole Nappy. <laughs> Nicole Nappy has an outstanding commitment and enthusiasm in her role as lead emergency medical technician instructor for the Emergency Services Training Program. The Emergency Services Training, EST, program is offered to high school seniors by the Carroll County Volunteer Emergency Services Association at the Carroll County Public Safety Training Center on school days, Monday through Friday from noon to three. Nicole is committed to her students and is an all-in instructor. She is dedicated to excellence and strives to have the finest EMS providers for Carroll County Emergency Services. She's very creative with the students and strives to make EMS lectures interesting, which can be challenging at times. Nicole's enthusiasm is contagious and it's difficult to get excited about presenting any material after a busy day or night during her job. As EMS Lieutenant with her Baltimore County Fire Department, she still finds time and she's successful at it. Nicole is a charm and a fondness for her students. She can be serious and even strict while publicly rooting for her students to succeed. Gaining the class's attention without instilling fear often means adding a measure of warmth to each day's lesson plan. For this, for many other reasons, please join me in recognizing the Instructor Officer of the Year, Lieutenant Nicole Nappy. Prosecutor of the Year. Nominated for the Prosecutor of the Year are Alan Culver, Circuit Court Unit Supervisor, Courtney Colonies, Assistant State's Attorney. The award for Prosecutor of the Year is presented to Alan Culver. I am very happy to learn that Alan Culver has been named Carroll County's Prosecutor of the Year. I offer my heartfelt congratulations as the recognition is well deserved. I also want to congratulate the other nominees, Ted Eiler and Courtney Colonies from our office, who are also very worthy of their nomination and do a tremendous amount to ensure the safety of our citizens. Allen is an instrumental part of our office as our circuit court chief. He oversees all serious felony matters brought before our grand jury, supervises not only felony prosecutors in circuit court, but our victim witness unit and litigation support unit. Every serious felony case that occurs in Carroll County, he has some role in that case along the way. Allen is so respected by our office and the courts, he is seen as a go-to person by every prosecutor in our office when they need advice or input on their cases. Beyond prosecuting numerous felony cases himself and supervising the successful prosecutions of many felony cases in 2017, Allen was again called on by the Maryland State's Attorneys Association to train new prosecutors statewide. He conducted a training for the Carroll County Intervention Team and organized many other trainings for our local police agencies on various legal issues. In 2017, Allen continued to be active in the community by being a member of this year's Leadership Carroll class and regularly engaging the community at events such as National Night Out, the Special Olympics Torch Run, and the Drug Overdose and Prevention Vigil. Most impressive, he served as a coach for the mock trial team from Liberty High School, who incidentally won this year's county competition. It was no surprise to me they won with Allen volunteering his time to guide them as they were learning from one of the best. A notable courtroom success of Allen's in 2017 was his prosecution of two individuals for the brutal murder of a Carroll County woman. Allen worked tirelessly for about a year preparing witnesses for trial, working with detectives from the Carroll County Sheriff's Office to assemble the evidence, organize and present a large amount of forensic evidence in court, and presenting expert testimony from the medical examiner, all in order to secure first-degree murder convictions against both of these individuals after two separate two-week jury trials. As a result of his work, one is serving life without the possibility of parole, and the other is serving 40 years. I get to see what those outside of our office don't, and that is Alan putting in many evenings and weekends, sacrificing time with his family and children just to ensure that the victim and her family were able to find justice in the courtroom. While I am so happy the Chamber of Commerce has recognized his effort in improving public safety this year, 
I can tell you for the last 17 years, he has exemplified the traits of what makes a great prosecutor. He is fair, hardworking, has unquestioned integrity, is always focused on securing the best outcomes for victims of crime, and is willing to step up and help his colleagues when needed without hesitation. He is someone who does his job for all the right reasons and never looks for recognition or the limelight, despite how deserving he is. So, knowing Alan as I do, he is no doubt right about now crawling under the table to hide. But it is too late, Alan. Congrats and thank you from all of the citizens of Carroll County for making it safer for our loved ones. It is with great pleasure that the Chamber of Commerce recognizes Alan Culver as Prosecutor of the Year. Correctional Officer of the Year. The award for Correctional Officer of the Year goes to Deputy Timothy Bear. <laughs> Deputy Bear has been employed with the Sheriff's Office since November 15, 2017. He's currently assigned to the Sheriff's Shift Number One with the Security Services Division. Deputy Bear has been identified by his commanders and coworkers as consistently taking initiative to improve the environment of the detention center and to always ensure that cleanliness in the facility is met at a high expectation. Tim consistently exhibits pride, integrity, and sets positive examples for other to follow, others to follow. He has earned his reputation as a leader by bringing a positive attitude and a commitment to teamwork each day. Deputy Bear consistently displays exceptional competence, sound judgment, and a depth of professional knowledge in the execution of his responsibilities. He carries himself as a role model who leads by example. He completes his duties with self-reliance, keeping the safety of the staff, public, and inmates, in, inmates paramount. With his perseverance and aggregate dedication to duty, he consistently exceeds the expectations of his supervisors. We are proud to name Deputy Tim Baer as Correctional Officer of the Year. Our next award is Probationary Officer of the Year. The award for Probationary Officer of the Year goes to District Court Supervisor Ted Eiler. During his 13-year career in Carroll County State's Attorney's Office, Ted served in many different roles prior to becoming the Chief, District, the Chief of the District Court. He has served in the role of frontline district court attorney handling a variety of criminal and serious traffic cases prosecuted in the district court, including numerous DUJs, assaults, thefts, and other significant crimes. In July of 2017, Ted was promoted to his current position as chief of the district court division and is responsible for a number of significant comp contributions to the Carroll County State's Attorney's Office that often fly under the radar. Ted's additional contributions include overseeing the day-to-day -day operations of the district court division, supervising and mentoring six attorneys and six support staff, and the supervision of all the juvenile prosecutions by the state's uh, assistant state's attorneys. Ted also reviews all criminal DUI and accident cases that are charged in the district court and meets weekly with civilians that file criminal complaints before a district court commissioner to determine whether prosecution is warranted and to assist in resolving disputes between parties by recommending a process short of criminal prosecution, such as mediation. Ted reviewed 237 civilian charged complaints in 2017 and successfully resolved 65% of those complaints without the need for criminal court prosecution, saving prosecution resources and precious court time. In 2017, Ted volunteered and participated in numerous community events, often during non-work hours. These events include one of my favorite, Polar Bear Plunge, which raised money and awareness for Special Olympics of Maryland, National Night Out, Sykesville Fire Department, and the Westminster Fall Fest. Ladies and gentlemen, the Probationary Officer of the Year, Ted Eiler.
the Life Saving Award. Nominated for the annual Life Saving Award are Trooper First Class Derek Eckert from the Maryland State Police, Sergeant Richard Lambert from the Westminster Police Department. A single incident involving Private First Class Adam Laser, Corporal Jesse Claggett, and Private First Class Eric Amenez, all from the Westminster Police Department. A single incident which involved the following people from the Gamber, Gamber Volunteer Fire Department. Medic Josh Claggett, EMT Mary Burns, E-134 Mike Franklin, Chief Charlie Green, Captain Chad Hastings, Firefighter Chris Wilson, PIO Clay Myers, Firefighter Frank Smith, Firefighter Dylan Baker, Captain Alan Barnes, Firefighter Emily Franklin, Firefighter George Seifert, Firefighter Todd Tracy, and First VP Dave Bollinger. The same incident involved the following people from the Sykesville Volunteer Fire Department. Medic 129 Jeff Rizzo, Lieutenant Jennifer Donovan, Charles Custer, Squad 12, Kevin Shiloh, Squad 12, Chief Eddie Ruck, Sergeant Jeremy Nagel, Lieutenant Sean Broughton, Captain Stephen Cherry, and POV William Buck. The Life Saving Award goes to Trooper First Class Derek Eckert. Responsibilities of a state trooper are varied and may differ greatly from one day to another. The typical duties relate to keeping the peace, law enforcement, protection of people and property, and the investigation of crimes. However, troopers are expected to respond to a variety of situations that may arise while they are on duty. An example of an unexpected situation is when Trooper First Class Eckhart was called upon to save the life of another. On October 8, 2017, TFC Eckhart was returning to the Westminster Barrack from an earlier incident. While at the traffic signal on Route 140, he heard over the radio the Carroll County Sheriff's Office being dispatched to an address in Finksburg for a 21-year-old male in cardiac arrest due to an overdose. TFC Eckhart also overheard the responding deputy's location, and it was much further away from the address than his own. He also noticed that the Reese Volunteer Fire Company's ambulance was already heading to Carroll Hospital Center from a different incident. TFC Eckhart knew the next closest ambulance would be responding from the Westminster City area and responded to the address to assist. Upon his arrival at the residence, TFC Eckhart retrieved his personal medical bag and bag valve mask from his vehicle and entered the home. Family members told him that the patient was in the basement and that a previously administered dose of Narcan had no effect. A family member was already attempting CPR. TFC Eckhart observed the patient to have agonal respirations, which he knew would not sustain life if left untreated. TFC Eckhart could feel the patient had a pulse. He requested the family member to stop CPR and took action to protect and maintain an open airway. TFC Eckhart utilized his personal bag valve mask to administer several rescue breaths. He observed the patient's condition was not improving from the first dose of Narcan and administered his department-issued Narcan to the patient. He continued using the bag valve mask to administer effective breaths. After a few minutes of reoxygenation from the bag valve mask and the administration of the second dose of Narcan, the patient began to slowly regain consciousness and eventually began to breathe on his own. TFC Eckhart removed the airway due to it activating the patient's gag reflex. The patient began to vomit. A sheriff's deputy that had recently arrived assisted TFC Eckhart in turning the patient on his side to prevent asphy asphyxiation. The patient then came to and was able to hold himself. EMS arrived and took over patient care. The patient was transported to Carroll Hospital Center where he survived his overdose because of the quick critical thinking and actions of TFC Eckhart. The next award is Volunteer of the Year. The award for Volunteer of the Year goes to Auxiliary Lieutenant Kevin Cox. Auxiliary Lieutenant Kevin Cox is 28 years of age and resides with his wife in Sykesville, Maryland. He's a staff sergeant in the United States Air Force where he served for eight years. In May of 2016, Lieutenant Cox began, began his service in the town of Sykesville as a volunteer auxiliary officer. Due to his advanced military training as a non-commissioned officer, 
Kevin quickly distinguished himself as a person capable of far higher levels of responsibility and was subsequently asked by the Chief of Police to take over the leadership of the Sykesville Police Auxiliary Unit in early 2017. Since that time, Lieutenant Cox has provided an invaluable service to the town of Sykesville and to the Sykesville Police Department in numerous ways. He created a modern training program for all auxiliary officers that meets the state MPTC requirements, as well as the new method of tracking the training of each member. Lieutenant Kevin Cox coordinates the scheduling of all the town events and special assignments that involve the auxiliary and personally works most of the events himself. In 2017, he was responsible for the scheduling of 14 town events, and he was present at almost all of these events to supervise the other auxiliary officers and to assist the chief of police and the sworn officers with providing a safe event. During 2017, the auxiliary unit contribu contributed a total of 1,066 hours of service to the town with an estimated cost savings of $27,000 to the town of Sykesville. It is important to note that Kevin accomplished all this plus more while balancing the demands of being a full-time staff sergeant in the United States Air Force, along with the responsibilities of his family life. It is for these and many reasons that we are proud to recognize Auxiliary Lieutenant Kevin Cox as the Volunteer of the Year. Lieutenant Cox is unable to join us today. He is currently in Korea serving our country with the United States Air Force. Accepting the award on behalf of the Auxiliary Lieutenant Kevin Cox is his wife, Heather Cox. Law Enforcement Officer of the Year. Nominated for Law Enforcement Op Officer of the Year are Master Deputy Kathleen Yox, Carroll County Sheriff's Office, Officer First Class Jonathan Cranshaw, Hampstead Police Department. The award for Law Enforcement Officer of the Year goes to Master Deputy Kathleen Yox. Master Deputy Yox of the Carroll County Sheriff's Office has served at the office since 2006. A seasoned deputy, her production and work ethics are viewed as examples for other deputies to emulate. During 2017, she made 21 DUI arrests, second most in the agency. Additionally, she made 19 controlled dangerous substance arrests, 14 warrant arrests, and 11 felony arrests. She holds an 80% closure rate on her investigations and closed several high-profile cases in 2017, including the arrest of two offenders who committed multiple residential burglaries, two offenders who committed a serious felonies assault, and one offender who stole antique firearms from a residence. Her daily job performance and high productivity are a direct reflection of the commitment and dedication she has to the citizens of Carroll County. In addition to her patrol duties, Master Yox is a certified canine handler and partners with her bloodhound, Pinky, a scent tracking dog. In 2017, Pinky and Master Yox completed 15 tracks, successfully locating numerous lost and felonious individuals. During one search, Master Yox and Pinky were able to locate an 86-year-old male who suffers from dementia after he had wandered from his house. Locating this individual likely saved the man's life as outside temperatures were extremely cold. He would not have likely survived the night. She also serves as a search and rescue specialist acquiring advanced training which certified her as a level three search and rescue technician. She's a true professional and more deserving of recognition for her hard work, superb initiative, and proactive approach to her duties and service to the citizens of Carroll County. We're proud to recognize Master Deputy Kathleen Yox as Law Enforcement Officer of the Year. The Distinguished Achievement Award. Nominated for the Distinguished Achievement Award are PFC Martin Runk, Westminster PD. 
Patrolman First Class Jason Kirkner, Sykesville PD. Chief Donald Yingling, Senior, Harney Volunteer Fire Department. From a single incident involving the following from the Carroll County Department of Public Safety, ECS Adam Harris, ECS Emily Franklin, ECS John Krebs, ECS Matthew Mc McNaman, ECS Kyle Debnan, ECS Ashley Bergen, ECS Samantha Geiger, and ECT Wayne Osler. The Distinguished Achievement Award goes to Chief Donald Yingling Sr. for the video. Donald, Donnie Yingling Sr., Chief Emeritus, Harney Volunteer Fire Company, was nominated by President James Waybright on behalf of the Harney Volunteer Fire Company for the Distinguished Achievement Award. Donnie Yingling grew up just a half a mile away from the Harney Volunteer Fire Company, has been a very active member in that community his entire life. Chief Yingling first became interested in the Harney Volunteer Fire Company at a very young age. Unfortunately, in his youth, his family place of business caught fire and responding firemen ran out of water and despite trying their best, were unable to contain the flames. He says that his experience sparked his interest in the fire company. Additionally, he credits the people of the fire company for providing him some good direction when his father died. Donnie was only 11 years old at the time. Chief Yingling has also believed in training, staying up to date on certifications and embracing new requirements within the fire service, even taking online classes to ensure his knowledge is kept current. As a result of this certifications, he became the first emergency medical technician in Harney many years ago. Despite all of his accomplishments, Chief Yingling emphasizes that it is a we thing and that we did it together. Wayne Powell, former chief of the Emmitsburg Volunteer Fire Company, speaks highly of Chief Yingling, and he's service saying, Chief Yingling is a consummate professional for his immediate community, as well as the neighboring fire departments. Powell commented his ability to anticipate these things can hinder the operations and become a serious threat to the health and well-being of the firefighters in Legendary. Plus, his keen ability have also been relied upon when the worst is unfolding, Powell went on to say that Chief Yingling is loved day in and day out by those he serves and for those that he commands. Brothers Lee and Leonard Bowers, both involved in the Harney Volunteer Fire Company for 30 years, say that Yingling is also an inventor, creating a silo probe to help in farm fires. His innovation made his company the go-to for silo fires. Stephen Wance, Carroll County Commissioner, commends Yinglings on how calm he always is, no matter how big the emergency may have been. Wance finished by saying that Yingling was a great friend, great mentor, and great chief. Yingling's time and dedication to the Harney Volunteer Fire Company will always be valued, respected, and honored. Perhaps Louise Sturkhauser, a 60-year member of the Ladies Auxiliary, says it's best. He is an outstanding member of the community. Chief Yingling's son, David Yingling, commented that his, everyone knows his dad is the old man and that wherever he goes, all know who his father is. He goes on to say that many others know to be true as well and would not be the person I am today if it wasn't for his guidance. The Bronze Medal of Outstanding Performance. The award for the Bronze Medal of Outstanding Performance goes to Detective William Dave Jednorski of Westminster Police Department. Detective First Class William Dave Jednorski, Westminster Police Department, Bronze Medal of Outstanding Performance. Detective William Dave Jednorski joined the Westminster Police Department in 2011 following a distinguished 25-year career with the Baltimore Police Department. Much of his career in Baltimore was spent as a narcotics investigator. While some might consider a slower pace in the retirement job, that's never been the case with Detective Jed Norsky. After a brief assignment to patrol, Dave was assigned to the narcotics section, where he has served ever since. 2017 was an exceptional year for Detective Jed Norsky. He handled a number of significant investigations throughout the year, applying the expertise learned over a career in Baltimore to his investigations here in Westminster. 
The following are just a few examples of the quality of his work during 2017. In February, Detective Jed Norsky received information that a known drug suspect was stealing drugs out of a local hotel. Working with an informant, Dave made a controlled purchase of drugs from the suspect at the hotel. On March the 7th, Detective Jed Norsky obtained and executed a search warrant on the hotel room occupied by the suspect. A large amount of crack cocaine and heroin was recovered from the room, as well as a scale and more than $1,500 in cash. The subject was arrested and charged with the felony distribution of drugs. He was released from jail pending trial shortly thereafter. Several weeks later, Detective Jed Norsky observed the same subject walking along an alley in Westminster. Dave was aware that there was an open warrant for the subject stemming from the case earlier in March. The suspect was detained and arrested on the open warrant. When searched following his arrest, officers located $550 in cash and a felonious amount of crack cocaine on this person. When questioned about his activities, the suspect admitted distributing cocaine in Westminster. He was subsequently convicted and sentenced to 20 years in jail. In April, Detective Jed Norsky was conducting covert surveillance in the area of Cover Lane due to complaints about drug activity. While conducting surveillance, he observed two males arguing. As he watched, he observed one of the subjects pull a gun and begin pistol whipping the other in an attempt to rob him. Detective Jed Norsky notified police communications of the robbery and pursued the suspect on foot as he fled the scene. At great personal risk, Detective Jed Norsky confronted the armed suspect and ordered him to the ground. The suspect ultimately complied and was taken into custody without further violence. A loaded revolver was recovered from his waistband. The suspect was subsequently charged with attempted armed robbery, use of a handgun in the commission of a felony, and other related charges. Detective Jed Norsky is a true professional who's been recognized publicly by State's Attorney Brian D. Leonardo for his excellence in major drug investigations. He's also been qualified in both district and circuit courts as an expert in matters relating to the illegal sale of drugs. His efforts during 2017 are reflective of the highest standards of the law enforcement profession. We are therefore pleased to recognize Detective First Class William Dave Jednorski with a bronze medal for outstanding performance. As I was walking around, uh, as people were coming in this morning, my uh, brother from another mother, Dave Bollinger, said to me, he said, you know, it's because of these men and women that I sleep really good at night. And he's right. So again, we say thank you. There's a person here who uh, will close this event who I think deserves an extra round of applause because he's the one that is behind the police departments, the fire departments, the small business, the county, the government, everything. So ladies and gentlemen, Mike McMillan. First off, I'm not behind at all. So if you have any complaints about any of those things, don't bring them to me. No, I'm only kidding. Thank you so much, Seth. Uh, Seth did a great job today, right? Thank you. Thank you, Seth. All the, there's so many folks to thank. Everybody who actually sponsored this, uh, everybody who worked towards it, all of you who came here. Uh, this is an important event. And uh, I'd ask you to spread the word so we can get even more people out here next year. I think events like this help to build community. And again, that's what the Chamber's about. We're here to help the business community, but we're here to help the overall community because families, safety, all of that is good for our community. It's what makes Carroll a wonderful place where people should want to come here, want to live here, want to open up their own shop. And uh, this is just a great place. So we've been here now 29 years, my uh, wife and I, and I've uh, been in this job almost eight, and I just love it. Uh, and it's because of all of you folks. So I want to thank all of you for that. Um, there are some centerpieces. Again, uh, all of your tables, everybody kind of lock your eyes on them. When the meeting's over with, whoever's birthday is closest to today gets to take that home with you. So does, does that make sense? I'm explaining that right. Like if your birthday is tomorrow or la whoever's birthday is closest day-wise, you get to take it home. So someone needs to take it home because it's pretty amazing, okay? And they were again given to us by trainers, local carpet company, shop local. You can find all of our members at carrollcountychamber.org on our website too. 
Um, I don't think I have any other announcements except just to say thanks. Thanks to all of you for all that you do. Seth said it at the beginning. It's really hard to pick one award winner. Um, we do the best we can, but we want to make sure that we draw a spotlight on what all of you folks do, and that's really why we're here, and it's why we'll do it again next, next year. Oh, oh yeah, I, I got that here. I didn't forget. And now to conclude the meeting, we need to get uh, Chaplain Pat Geyer up here again for our benediction. And when she's finished with the prayer, the meeting's adjourned. It's okay to give a round of applause to a chaplain, okay? Let's bow our heads. Father, we're eternally grateful for the time we have had this morning to share with our public safety personnel. I ask that you continue to be their protector, and I pray a blessing over each individual in this room that works as a public safety professional, regardless of their agency. Father, we are blessed in our county. We acknowledge that to you, and we look forward, Father, to the oncoming year until the next award time when we will be able to thank new members for being here with us and receiving an award. Lord God, thank you again for our county. We covet your protection, and Lord, we thank you for this day. In your name, amen. <laughs>